Hi students, uh, this is Kwame Wuku, founder of Cagletics and your professor in, the, in my Cagnos Analytics School. So in this video I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence and automation because I'm getting a lot of questions from a lot of you students and some of you guys that are interested in signing up but you, keep, you, you, know, you want to know a thing or two about AI and why AI is going to be important. Now in a nutshell, artificial intelligence is essentially trying to use computers or machines to make decisions on behalf of human beings, okay? So if you've heard of machine learning, essentially machine learning is a similar idea, you see. There are very smart people, uh, data scientists, uh, who are writing algorithms. Uh, another name for algorithms is just code. It is logical code. And what this code is doing is, it takes, um, they, they, they write some, something that defines a process, okay? So based on, um, based on something happening, then they expect something else to happen. So if you, if you go to McDonald's and you order a cheeseburger, you know, chances are someone is going to ask you if you want uh, fries with that, or you want a drink, or whether you want to supersize it or not. And based on your answers, uh, they are going to give you the burger, or you know, they are going to, they are going to ask for your credit card number, and, and, and those sort of things, right? So you can program the same thing to, to a computer, right? If you have an interface, and you go to the interface, and you, you select the burger, you select the drink, the, the algorithm or the code is going to ask you those questions that a human being can, can ask you. So, you know, this is not a very complicated example, but th that is the idea of machine learning. They are training machines, and don't always think that the machines are robots, okay? Sometimes it's just a software application. You know, it, 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 ultimately, AI is supposed to automate a lot of the processes and the tasks. Like, even in my course, even on the, on the website or the platform that I'm using for my course, is using some artificial intelligence, not so complex, but there is automation there in the sense that when you sign up, um, you get an email and you automatically log into my course and there are some there are some processes in place that you know essentially I don't have to be there when when I get a new sign up so I could be sleeping and I'm getting students uh, in my sleep right this model is very powerful because I don't have to be at my desk all the time signing students up you see so that is the main thing like I don't have to hire a lot of people to be able to get things done so a lot of jobs are going to be lost when this happens because the airports, you know, the restaurants, healthcare, you know, a lot of office work, most of it is going to be automated because they are, they are building software applications that uh, have, uh, that is essentially automated in the sense that there will be a time where your taxes, you know, I'm sure some of you entrepreneurs already have software application that almost automates your tax creation. So I'm going to let you watch a documentary that I saw about a week ago, I think on November 5th or so, um, it's a frontline. Um, documentary called uh, AI and I'm going to show you a snippet of that video because legally I don't think I can show you guys the whole video but there's there's one there's a session where they talk about AI in the workforce and I plead with you guys to watch it at a college in Goshen Indiana a group of local business and political leaders come together to try to understand the impact of AI and the new machines Molly Kinder studies the future of work at a Washington think tank. How many people have gone into a fast food restaurant and, and done a self-ordering? Anyone? Yes? Panera, for instance, is doing this. Um, cashier was my first job. And, in, in, uh, and where I live in Washington, D.C., it's actually the number one occupation for the greater D.C. region. There are millions of people who work in cashier positions. This is not a futuristic challenge. This is something that's happening sooner than, than we think. In the popular discussions about robots and automation and work, almost every image is of a man on a factory floor or a truck driver. Um, and yet, in our data, when we looked, women disproportionately hold the jobs that today are at highest risk of automation. Um, and that's not really being talked about. And that's in part because women are overrepresented in some of these marginalized occupations, like a cashier or a fast food worker, um, and also in a large numbers in clerical jobs, in offices, HR departments, payroll, finance. A lot of that is more routine processing information processing paper, transferring data, that has huge potential for um, automation. AI is going to do some of that, software um, robots are going to do some of that. So how many people are still working as switchboard operators? Probably not in this country. Um, the workplace of the future will demand different skills, and gaining them, says Molly Kinder, will depend on who can afford them. I mean, it's not a good situation in the United States. There's been some excellent research that says that half of Americans couldn't afford a $400 unexpected expense. And if you want to get to $1,000, there's even less. So imagine you're going to go out without a month's pay, two months' pay, a year. Imagine you want to put savings toward a, a course to, re to redevelop your career. People can't afford to take time off of work. They don't have a cushion. Um, so this lack of economic stability married with the disruptions in people's careers is a really toxic mix. The new machines will penetrate every sector of the economy. 
from insurance companies to human resource departments, from law firms to the trading floors of Wall Street. Wall Street's going through it, but every industry is going through it. Every company is looking at all of the disruptive technologies. It could be robotics or drones or blockchain. And whatever it is, every company is using everything that's developed, everything that's disruptive, and thinking about how do I apply that to my business to make myself more efficient. And, and what efficiency means is mostly how do I do this with fewer workers. And I do think that when we look at some of the studies about opportunity in this country and the inequality of opportunity, the likelihood that you won't be able to advance from where your parents were, I think that that's, is very serious and gets to the heart of the way we like to think of America as the land of opportunity. Inequality has been rising. Warn your friends, warn your families. AI is going to destroy almost 50 to 50, uh, 40 to 50 percent of corporate jobs. You know, we are talking about uh, corporate types jobs in finance, you know, jobs in finance, HR. I mean, if a computer can do it, I mean, even if you think about it, a time is going to come where if you have any kind of, uh, if you are not feeling well, your phone will be able to diagnose. Um, your, your, your issue, you know, you may have to, you could probably take your blood or take your temperature, but your phone will be able to determine what your illness is, and it's going to be really complex, or, you know, once your phone extracts whatever it thinks is wrong with you, it can automatically send it to your doctor, or it can sift through a database of all the people who have had the same issue, and the computer, then the, and, the, and your cell phone will tell you what is wrong with you, and it will even try to order some medicine for you, right? So if you click yes, order the medicine, it is going to actually um, order the medicine for you essentially. You don't have to do any search. Um, it's going to be an incredible world and I'm really excited about it. So how does it relate to my course? Well, artificial intelligence is useless without data. So if you're a data analyst or you know how to use data, you know, you know how to capture data, you know how to prepare data, you know how to load data, you know how to present data, you become extremely powerful. Now, um, I really, really recommend that everybody gets some data skills. You know, I've been preaching this for a very long time. You have to be comfortable with data. You have to be able to learn how to use data to help a business. So I'm going to do a video where I talk about how you can use data to help a business, okay? So um, enroll in my course, and uh, if you need, if you need, have any questions, definitely let me know, and uh, uh, see, you, see you soon. Thank you. Stop recording.